Hello, this is Professor Gallagher with a very quick video for my physical computing students. This shows how to set up an iPhone as a hotspot. First, some tips and things to know. So if other devices have joined your iPhone and they're using it over Wi-Fi, then you can only use cellular data on your iPhone to connect to the internet as you host Wi-Fi for others. So make sure that you've got a good full bars cellular connection when you're using your phone as a hotspot. Also, running Wi-Fi and cellular on your phone is going to be a power draw, so you probably want to make sure that your iPhone is plugged in when you're using it as a hotspot. And if things still aren't working, make sure that your carrier plan allows your device to be used as a hotspot while you provide cellular service. So to set up your iPhone as a hotspot, select the Settings app, select Personal Hotspot, make sure Allow Others to Join is selected. It should be green. If your Wi-Fi is off, make sure that you've turned it on. Set your password. It needs to be at least eight characters. Remember when entering your password that case matters. And that's it for the setup. You can always double check inside of the cellular setting in this app to make sure that everything is set up. But if you've been able to do everything that I just showed, you should be good. Then on your Mac, if you go under the Wi-Fi icon, you should see your phone's name. Now remember the exact spelling, letter K, spaces, any special symbols, and all. You'll want to write that down because you'll need this when connecting your Raspberry Pi or other microcontrollers to your mobile hotspot. Then to make sure that your Wi-Fi is working, why don't you select the phone. The connection is going to spin for a bit, but when you connect, the circle on the left should turn blue, and on the right, you should be an indicator for how many bars of service you have. Then, when you're connected to Wi-Fi, your iPhone should show a green bubble over the time. I found that even though I have full bars of connection, Wi-Fi is still really slow on my computer. And for some reason, Safari on my Mac doesn't work when I'm connected to my iPhone hotspot, but Chrome on my Mac does. So you might want to open Chrome, visit a web page, make sure all is well. And if it is, there's no reason to keep Wi-Fi connected on your laptop, so you should be able to connect back to whatever standard Wi-Fi works well for you. But at this point, you should have verified that Wi-Fi setup on your phone does work, and you should have the name of your network and your password. Now, if you still have problems, you can try restarting your iPhone and your laptop. Also, under System Preferences, if you go to Networking and then click on Advanced, you might notice that there's an old listing for your iPhone's Wi-Fi network. Now, my iPhone isn't shown in this list, but if you're still having problems and you see your iPhone in here, if you highlight that, then click on the minus to delete it, then click the OK button, then reboot and retry logging in, hopefully will that work? And if it doesn't work, you might try visiting the Genius Bar at the Apple Store or call Apple Tech Support. But for my students, if you're following along, make sure that you remember your iPhone's Wi-Fi network name. That's going to be the SSID when you hook up with your Raspberry Pi. And also remember your password. Good luck. Now, for those who want to go for the full setup of the Raspberry Pi, we're using Raspberry Pi 3A Pluses in my class. Those Pis do have Wi-Fi capabilities, and we'll set that Pi up and hook it to your iPhone hotspot. So everybody in my class has a 32 gigabyte micro SD card that does not come with a Pi, so you have to buy that separately. This card will act like our hard drive, so we're going to store the Raspberry Pi operating system on here and any other files that we're going to be using. Slide this card into the slot of your card reader. It only goes in one way, so if it looks crooked, that's the wrong way. Some card readers are spring-loaded, not all of them are. So for mine, it's not until I push in a little bit that the card actually snaps into place. It's okay if yours isn't spring-loaded, though. Most aren't. Then if you plug your card reader into your computer, you should see that it's mounted on your desktop. Mine says boot because I already have something that's installed on this. I'm going to be erasing that. Yours likely says something like untitled or no name. That's fine. Now I'm going to install the imager software from the raspberrypi.com website, but first I'm going to make sure that I turn on my Wi-Fi to my most reliable Wi-Fi, not my iPhone Wi-Fi. Then I'm going to open a browser. I'm going to head over to raspberrypi.com. I'm going to click on software, then scroll down to find the install Raspberry Pi OS using the Pi imager, and I'm going to download the version that's appropriate for my computer. Then I'm going to minimize my browser. I'm going to double click the DMG file that I downloaded. At least this is how it works on the Mac. On Windows, do whatever you need to do to install this software and then run the application that you've just installed. And this is what you should see. So click the Choose OS button. This box will pop up and click the top selection, which should be Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit. Then click Choose Storage. It'll identify any storage devices that are plugged into your computer. Make sure you select the right ones. So I'm going to select the generic mass storage, the one that's about 32 gig. That's my SD card. I do not want to format over my 2 terabyte drive where I store all my videos. That would be bad. Then click Write. I'm getting a warning that I'm going to overwrite everything that exists on the volume that I just selected. I'm going to click Yes. You might have to type in your computer's password just to verify that this is okay to do. It'll take a few minutes to go ahead and write all of this, then it'll take another minute or more to verify everything. But when you're done, your SD card should now have the Raspberry Pi operating system on it, and your micro SD card will be unmounted from your computer. So even though you might have it plugged in, 
it's not accessible by your computer. Now I'm gonna quit the Raspberry Pi Imager program and you can also throw away the Raspberry Pi Imager that's mounted on your desktop as well as the Imager DMG file. You don't need those anymore. And then I'm gonna unplug the micro SD card that's connected to my computer and then plug it back in again. That should mount the boot volume on your computer and that's the Raspberry Pi operating system. Now my students are setting this up as part of a Pi cabinet build, which lights up when it's time to take prescription medications. So they're following along instructions at gallagher.com slash pi dash cabinet. Now we can skip most of this and jump down to the section that says step-by-step -step instructions. And here's where I've got information on connecting to a network. So we wanna click on the link that says Raspberry Pi configured and running on your local Wi-Fi network. And this brings us to a page that has step-by-step -step instructions that we can copy and paste to get things set up. So we can actually scroll down. We've done a bunch of this stuff. There's some alternate information in here for people that might've struggled, but we wanna be in step three, which is add a blank line named SSH to your boot directory. Now for Mac users, we're gonna use the term program to get this to work. I'm going to type command spacebar to open up spotlight and then just type in the word terminal which is the name of the application I want to run. Press return. It finds terminal on my Mac and runs it. I'll press command plus sign a few times to increase the font size in terminal. Windows users you're on your own to find out a terminal program that you should be using. I know many Windows users use a free program called putty p-u-t-t-y so you might want to investigate that. My students also have a slack channel so if you find out and you're a Windows user share on slack so you can help out your classmates. But once the terminal is running and my micro SD card is mounted on my computer as boot, I can return to the browser and I wanna copy this line that's in gray, touch volumes boot SSH. So copy that, then paste it into terminal at the prompt and then press return. And this creates a file named SSH, which needs to be on my Pi so that I can connect to it remotely over Wi-Fi using a terminal program. Then in the browser, I can scroll down to step four, which is highlight this command in gray, nano volumes boot WPA supplicant, then return to your terminal program, paste this in and press return. Now this is gonna open the nano word processing program that runs in the terminal. It's really ugly, it's very basic, and you only control it with your keyboard keys, not your mouse. So just use your arrow keys when you're in nano. Now your terminal screen's gonna go blank, it's gonna look like this, then return to the browser, highlight all this text below. So this is what we wanna type into that nano program. Now I'm assuming you're in the United States, but if not, be sure to read the accompanying text on how to set things up for international users. Then return to the terminal program and paste in the text we just copied. Now if we want to connect to Wi-Fi, and specifically the Wi-Fi hotspot on our phone, you're going to want to replace the SSID with your iPhone's hotspot network name. And the PSK is going to be your password. So be careful, remember that your mouse doesn't work, so you need to use your arrow keys to position your cursor. I'm gonna position it right after the E in network name, and then I'm gonna press the delete key to delete network name, and then I'm gonna put in the name of my Wi-Fi network that I can access from my iPhone's hotspot and mine is John's iPhone 11 Pro. I can even double check this by going up under the Wi-Fi pull down and it should show up here if your mobile device is still acting as a hotspot. Yep, I spelled mine correctly. Then I'm gonna move the cursor down to the next line and replace the text between the double quotes that is the hotspot password. I was having a hard time connecting and I'm not sure why, so I changed my initial password that was built with Prof G to this one that's just one word Python code, all lowercase, and this one worked for me. Make sure you're using your hotspot name and password, not mine. And now I've got a bit of additional information for my students that are setting up their Pies to work on the Boston College Wi-Fi network as well. So using your character keys, why don't you position your cursor up here and make a little bit of space just above where it says network equals open curly brace. So type in another block of code that says network in here exactly as I've shown you. So network equals curly brace, then space over a few spaces, SSID equals Boston College with no space in between, capital B, capital C, and ending in double quotes, then key underscore MGMT equals all caps none, then underneath that ID underscore STR equals and in double quotes location one, all one word, all lowercase, and then close in a curly brace. So this should set up the Boston College network so that it's the very first network that your Raspberry Pi will look at. Now you're not gonna connect to the BC network yet because you haven't found out your MAC address and registered that with the BC network using helix.bc.edu, but hopefully this will set up to work once you get things verified with your Raspberry Pi. Now I'm also gonna change the network setting that's below that. So I'll use the arrows to move my cursor down here. 
and I'm going to add a line after the password for my hotspot network and I'm going to type in ID underscore STR equals and this is going to say location two, all one word all lowercase make sure you close in double quotes and hopefully what this is going to do is it's going to look for your hotspot network as its second choice if it can't connect to the Boston College network so for my students if your file looks like this one but you've got your Wi-Fi hotspot name and your Wi-Fi password in there then hold down the control key type X you'll get a message that asks you if you want to save this type Y to save then press return to confirm the file name you'll be returned to the prompt and this looks good now the next thing we need to do is quit the terminal program and eject our micro SD card and put that in our Raspberry Pi I'm gonna quit my terminal program minimize my browser I'm gonna right click on my boot volume and I'm gonna select eject it might take a few seconds for this to actually eject but once the boot volume goes away then you can eject your micro SD card from your card reader and plug that into your Raspberry Pi. So I've ejected my micro SD card. If you flip your Pi over, this is the slot where the SD card goes and it should be face down with uh, copper teeth going in this slot. Again, it only lines up one way. So if it looks crooked, it's not correct, but this is correct. Make sure that your Wi-Fi hotspot is on when you boot your Pi, then take your USB cable, plug in your Pi and you should see the Pi boot. These lights will flash and in about 30 seconds, Hopefully, your Pi will connect to your Wi-Fi network and you're ready to connect in via terminal. So now this is going to be very important. Make sure that your Wi-Fi hotspot is turned on. So you want your computer to be connected to your Wi-Fi hotspot as well as your Pi. And again, sometimes the hotspots are a little quirky. I actually had to try this a couple of times, but I was eventually able to connect. Then return down to your browser and you can scroll down to step eight. Then we can open our terminal program again. I'm going to command spacebar, type in terminal, press return, and increase the font size. Then head back over to step eight, and I'm going to highlight this ssh keygen command, copy that, return to the terminal, paste it in, press return. Your results might look very different from mine, but hopefully you're back at the prompt again. Then you can return to step nine and highlight this line that says ssh pi at raspberry pi dot local. So this is the command you type into a terminal to log into your Raspberry Pi. Now the user account that we're going to be using is named pi and your pi is currently called raspberry pi dot local, but you'll eventually change that to a name which is unique to you. And we'll notice that the password down here is raspberry. So again, make sure that you're logged into your Wi-Fi hotspot and I am. I'm going to paste in this SSH command and press return. There's a chance you might get some messages about security. You can just go ahead and ignore those and say yes to any prompts that you see. Then when you're asked for the Raspberry Pi's password, that is in all lowercase Raspberry. Make sure you spell that properly. Press return. And if you get this far, you have successfully logged into your Raspberry Pi computer that's connected to your Wi-Fi hotspot. Congratulations. Now my students are eventually gonna want to go through the steps that follow after step 10, where you're gonna change your password, change your Raspberry Pi's host name, and you can do those steps on your own. But first what I wanna show you is how you can find your MAC address. So my students are gonna need that when they go to helix.bc.edu and set up their Raspberry Pi so that it can access the Boston College network. And the way that we find the MAC address is we type in ifconfig, one word, all lowercase at the prompt, and then press return. Now the output that you're going to get is going to look really weird, but the MAC address that you want to look for is this one that's underneath global where it says ether. Mine is highlighted here, so you want to highlight yours, copy it, and save that to a separate file. You can write it down if you want to, but you're going to need to enter this exactly as you see it here when you register your device under helix.bc.edu for the Boston College Network. So the MAC addresses are unique to each individual Raspberry Pi device. They're hardwired in the factory. They're set up at the time of manufacture. So at this point, you've gone through everything you need to do to continue to set things up on your own. You probably want to go through and continue on step 10 so you can change the host name, change your password, reboot your Pi, but also go to helix.bc.edu and register your Pi with the BC network, and hopefully you'll be able to log in there as well. If not, you can use your personal Wi-Fi network that's attached to your mobile phone, and you should be able to continue to work through this assignment. Good luck!